Okay, so we are very, very excited tonight that we have three distinct exhibitions that we're opening. And we're gonna have events tonight around all three of those exhibitions. We're very lucky tonight to have SIN, our MFA exhibition by the artists Durs and Sierra Redding. We so also we have, have Dispositions, which is our BFA exhibition. And then we have our annual juried student show opening as well tonight, which was curated by Leslie Moody Castro, who I can see is in the audience. And we're gonna to get to hear from Leslie as well. And so we have a lot of really fun events for tonight. And you're gonna to get to hear from all of the different artists and you'll see all different views of the show. I do want you all to know that this will, this exhibition will open up tomorrow with time ticket entry. You do that by going to uam.nmsu.edu and clicking on tickets. They're totally free of charge and you can reserve a time to come in and see the show live. We would love to have you in here. So I'm gonna start the show by introducing you to our MFA, Sierra Redding, who's going to tell you about her work and the work is right behind her. Go ahead, Sierra. Hi, everyone. Welcome to my portion of SIN. My name is Sierra Redding, um, and I am officially graduating with my Master's of Fine Art, as Marissa had said. Uh, later, you'll hear a little bit more, and you'll be able to give me some questions and comments about my work, and I'll even show you a small little demo of the, all of the work behind me and around me. Um, this portion of SIN, I title it Phantoms. Phantoms, um, they are created to simulate phantom beings, st stimulate phantom sensations, as well as projecting a sense of phantom comfort to my viewers. These were made from my uh, very current experience as not only a visually impaired artist, but as well as somebody who has been socially isolated and socially distanced from all my loved ones, friends and family, and I know a lot of other people feel that as well. Um, so with this work, I was inspired by a uh, family therapist uh, named Virginia Satir, who had a prescription of eight hugs a day for maintenance. And I was trying my hardest to use this prescription to uh, maintain my own psychological health. So throughout this time, I used all of these um, vessels as a way to hug something because I haven't had a hug in so long. Um, with that being said, I will talk to you more about it and I will take you straight over to Jerjong, my co-exhibitor. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, thank you, Sierra, for that. Uh, so yeah, my name is Jerjong. Uh, I'm excited to share my work and research with you all. Uh, I would like to actually first thank a few people that helped make this happen. Thank you to the University Art Museum for allowing us to show within the space. Uh, my mentors and committee members Motoka Furuhashi, Julia Borello, and Georgina Bodoni, uh, as well as uh, my colleague on to my left here, CR Redding, for helping uh, create this uh, MFA exhibition. Uh, and then lastly, thank you to my family support, uh, especially my mom, who is right here with me, um, her sacrifices and patience, strength and courage for raising all our kids within the United States alone. Um, so a little bit about my work. My work looks at the navigation of cultural identity through my Hmong American experience within a dominant American nation state. Each piece are visual narratives, uh, visual narratives through the lens of colonization and assimilation and the erasure of Hmong history as stateless people. Um, the pieces reflects our migration before, during, and after our assistance to the United States in the Vietnam War, um, also known as the Secret War. I draw my references from a Hmong culture history and craft as a way to create these pieces. Um, so by creating this work, I look at reclaiming my Hmong identity through the narratives of storytelling. Um, and then thank you to everyone who took the time to join today and listen to see our work virtually uh, for those who are coming from afar on Zoom. Um, and then like Marissa and then we're saying, if able, I hope you all get a chance to see these pieces in person. Uh, thank you again, and then I'm going to pass it back to Marissa. Great. Thank you so much, Jer and Sierra. Um, we're going to take about 10 minutes for questions for Jer and Sierra. Kesley, who, but Kesley Bennett is walking around the spaces and helping you view the work as we speak. 
She's about to go into Sierra's uh, section into her studio. So if there are specific questions you have about specific works, Kesley will actually take us to the work to look at it. Okay, so if you wanna ask your question to the grad directly, you can do so at that time. So go ahead and either chat, put, put your question in the chat or raise your virtual hand and I'm looking for those. Don't all ask questions at once. It's very overwhelming. Okay, great. I'll ask a question. So, Jer, can you please tell us a little bit about, uh, uh, when I've been in your, your area, your exhibition, a lot of people have been asking me about the sewing machine that you use and how you potentially create the images prior and then uh, work with a, a sewing machine where you could feed it imagery. Is that how it is done? Or can you tell us a little bit more about the process of the medium that you use? Uh, yeah, so um, for the narratives, I first actually start off with um, Illustrator. Um, I design all of the illustrations on the app first, uh, the whole narrative, so I know how the structure looks like. Uh, and then after that, I change the color, what I need, and then I transfer that over to, um, we use the Bernina sewing machine. Um, I believe it's, I wanna say it's 790. Um, uh, and then I transfer that over to the app and then uh, the Bernina it has a separate app. So uh, I transfer that over and then that app actually digitize um, my illustration. So it changes uh, everything that's a solid color into any sort of pattern um, of the embroidery. And then once that's all digitized, it's then transferred through USB into the actual Bernina sewing machine. And then we have the embroidery attachment. And then all I, all I have to do is click on the design that I want, and then it stitches the um, illustrations for me. So some of these pieces, you'll actually see when you go close up, um, it's almost kind of like patchwork. So each actual illustration is um, embroidered and then cut and then um, sold onto the back part. Great, thank you so much, Jer. Um, Craig Culley is behind us and he has a question for Sierra. Hey, Sierra, I know that your work has a lot to do with sort of healing and, and, and um, trying to, I don't know if you'd say recover so much from the, the conditions of the pandemic and the loss of human touch, but there's certainly an element of, of healing involved in it. I'm also curious about the aspect that's implicit, uh, the implicit violence in the work too. Could you speak about that? Yeah, so thanks for the question, Craig. So um, again, I once I show, or once we have the breakout rooms, I'll show you a little bit more. But as you can see, Kesley is also showing a little bit of the, um, the pieces and the vessels. So I work with clay. Um, so each of the black um, morph forms that are sitting on top of all of these supports are made out of ceramic. And um, again, I hug these, but on the back end of these ceramic pieces, there's holes and there's digs where you can see where my fingers um, kind of dug into material and ripped it apart or tore it apart um, because there is some sort of um, act of violence when it comes down to embracing somebody and clutching them tightly. Um, and so on the back of these forms, there is that um, sense of kind of urgency, that violent urgency that I've really been um, feeling. Great, thank you so much, Sierra. Um, Tana, I see that your hand is up. I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Please unmute yourself. Um, thanks, Marissa. Uh, Jura, this question is for you. Um, you're um, the only MFA student that I'm aware of that is, um, was accepted into a Fulbright program. And I'm curious, um, I know that you were working um, with this style um, before you left for your Fulbright, but how would you say your Fulbright um, changed or informed what you were previously doing and how did, yeah, in, how does that, how is that reflected in the show now? 
Yeah, thank you, Tana. Um, actually, I feel like it has um, helped and kind of changed a lot about my perspective within my work. I think most of it really comes with like the discussions and conversations that I had with uh, the Hmong people who were living or who are living in Thailand. Um, a lot of those experiences, I think, kind of helped shape my experience. So we kind of had like some really good dialogues of like sharing our experiences of um, being Hmong within like these dominant spaces, um, like Hmong in Thailand, Hmong in the US. Um, what are the differences and similarities? I think that helped a lot with me constructing uh, my own narratives, um, what my narratives are, and hopes that other um, people can maybe um, connect to it as well. Um, another thing is, I think, being in Thailand, researching by myself, going there by myself, I think that experience alone, um, I think helped me kind of hone in on what um, I wanted to work on and research. Great, thank you so much. We'll take one more question that I'm gonna read from the chat. And then I wanna tell everyone that you will have an, a, a time at the end of this session we're going to put people into breakout rooms. And so you'll be, have, be able to have a discussion with the grads and ask them questions at that time as well. So the last question is from Todd Redding. And the question is, Sierra, can you explain how you hope your pieces will bring comfort to your audiences? Um, hi, Uncle Todd. It's been a while. <laughs> um, yeah, so I really hope, like my intention with this work was to um, allow my viewers to understand that they have this ability to um, rediscover their um, rediscover the importance of comfort and physical connection, or even just being around people, how important that is to their everyday lives. And that's really what I am intending for my audience is to kind of feel that um, that sense of comfort that you know we we have the ability to reconnect. Great, thank you so much for the questions. Um, Amy, uh, I can see that you have a question. Jur and Sierra will be available at the end of this uh, session to ask questions in a breakout room. So just hold that question. So I would, Jasmine and I are sitting in the juried student show. And every year we have, we open up submissions to students from any discipline across the university. And we get fantastic submissions, not only from the Department of Art, but from biology, at, um, the, the ag department, uh, our engineering department. And that becomes a real challenge for a curator such as our curator this, this year, Leslie Moody Castro. But Leslie took it on and she hit it out of the park. This is an absolutely beautiful show that Kesley will walk you around. Um, and I wanted to take this time to introduce Leslie. Leslie Moody Castro is an independent writer and curator who curates impactful exhibitions that involve culture exchanges between the places she lives and works, which include Austin, Texas and Mexico City. Leslie, could you just speak to us a little bit about curating this show and introduce, your, introduce yourself to this wonderful crowd we've got here? Hello, hello. Okay, great. Um, yeah, no, thank you so much for the introduction. And thank you so much for inviting me to curate the show, to jury the show. It's, um, I, I think that jury selection processes are always so much fun because it's such a great way to, to learn about work that artists are doing in other places that I'm not necessarily in. Um, and so it really kind of helps to like expand who I know, what work I see, and what work is being made in a place I'm not in in the, in the moment, right? Um, and especially after a year of pandemic, when we've all kind of been in one place pretty consistency, consistently, it was really cool to just like look through all of the submissions and see, see what we were getting. Um, I think that one of the really interesting things about jurying shows is that you're not necessarily in space or you don't know the space as well and you're really looking through photos, not necessarily the work itself. Um, and so it was, it's always a challenge. It's always like a really interesting challenge to see what you get and to see how everything kind of can, can work together in, in a way. 
Um, like what can fit with what, or like, oh wait, this thing is a little bit bigger than I expected. Can it fit in the space? And how does that kind of make things sort of shuffle around? Um, yeah. And so at the end of the day, when I'm jurying these, these exhibitions and these projects, it's really about, it's really about the work. Um, and it really becomes about like this sort of jigsaw puzzle of how work can work together in a variety of contexts, since I, I'm not the expert of the space at the, at the present time. Um, I also think it's, it's important to say too that when jurying these things, um, in my perspective and in the perspective of many others, many other curators that I know that do this on a regular basis, we always want everyone to be in the, we want everyone, everyone. We want to say yes to every single <laughs> piece, every single artist. We want everyone to participate and be involved. But unfortunately, that's never the reality because there's never enough space, right? Um, and so it becomes a really difficult decision every single time because ultimately you're, you are jurying something to be in a space and where things need to like fit together. Um, and so, yeah, it's always a challenge. It's always really fun. Um, it always takes like two to three passes with the work. Um, and then there's, there's always this really difficult editing process um, that is just difficult because you want everyone involved. But at the end of the day, I'm glad that everyone is happy with, with the exhibition and with the decisions. Thank you so much, Leslie, and for your time and your energy and your effort. And for everyone who's watching, we have a really fantastic series called the Visiting Artists and Scholars Lecture Still uh, Series, the Lillian Simon. And it's um, sponsored by the Lillian Simon Fund and the Department of Art and the University Art Museum. And Leslie came here as part of that series um, and met with our students. So really got to see some of the work that our students were doing, especially our graduate students ahead of time, which I thought was also really a wonderful, um, part of this year was having you here and seeing the work being made at NMSU and we hope to have Leslie here more in the future. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Leslie. We really appreciate everything that you did in this beautiful show. So, Okay, so we have uh, probably one of our more exciting times that we have per year which is our awards that we give out as part of the juried student show. And so I will introduce Jasmine Herrera, who is our art museum coordinator. Jasmine worked with Leslie and to create this beautiful show. And she'll also tell you about working with one of our students, Kesley Bennett, Jasmine. Hi, I'm Jasmine Herrera, um, art museum coordinator here at the University Art Museum. I'm also an alum of the program. I had my, I got my degree in art history in 2013 um, and I was in one of these shows. Um, so I have a deep love for it. I, I am so happy to help the students. This, this part of the show brings me a lot of joy knowing that these students can get awards. Um, and then as Marissa mentioned, this year I took on an intern. Um, we offer Art 376, which is a museum internship. And this year we took on Kesley Bennett who um, decided that the focus of her internship would be to produce a show. So I produced this show since 2015. Um, so I was ready to take on some help and Kesley came in and helped me from start to finish, which was great for me. <laughs> um, but it was a unique opportunity to give an NMSU student an in-depth training on sort of on a small scale, but how to produce a show literally from start to finish. Um, so that was a really great part of this year. Um, um, another exciting part is that we are going to give out just shy of $4,500 tonight. Um, and that's made up of endowments that we have, um, awards that we've had going for several years, and also donors that just sent us money in to give straight out to the students. So we have 19 awards. <laughs> so I'm going to go kind of quick. Um, but we wanted to try something cool, since we all can't be together, in that um, if you're in the virtual audience, and your name is red, we will take a couple minutes and it will help us if you either physically raise your hand or if you raise your hand in the reactions. Courtney Aldrich, our other amazing employee with the museum, is going to spotlight your video and another one of our employees is going to take a screenshot of it. And then after the event, we're going to try and create a really cool graphic with all of the winners who are present here tonight. Um, because normally we're all together and we take really exciting photos all together and of the work. Also, 
Kesley is going to walk around as we're reading the awards and try and give you a little glimpse of some of the pieces that have been selected. Anything? I think you got everything. Okay, so we are just going to jump right in. The first award, now that we've just heard from Leslie, is actually the Juror's Choice Award. And this award is uh, $150, and it is going to Yashoda Latkar for Transients. And of course, as video does, it went off as soon as you said it. <laughs> um, do you know if Yashoda is in the audience? I know Yashoda was outside a couple minutes ago. Is she? Yashoda, can you, can you get to somewhere where we can take a picture of you? Maybe, can, can you look at her video, but then go find Yashoda? <laughs> Oh, there she is, there she there is. There she is, okay. Yes, Shona. Smile, take a, take a screenshot, Katie. <laughs> Yashoda, stop moving. There okay, it is. <laughs> okay, congratulations, Yashoda, and thank you to Leslie for selecting that as the Juror's Choice Award. So the next award, um, the next actually two awards are part of a brand new endowment that we got last year. Um, and so there's a history of these awards. These individuals have been giving year after year, just each, each show. And so finally, um, for ease and also because they're extremely generous, they've set up an ongoing endowment that will not only offer these two awards, each jury student show each year, but it will also support the production of the jury student show. So, um, so lots of food when we yeah. come back uh, in real life. There's gonna be well-fed audiences. So, um, these awards, there's two, um, are, are supported by the Mark and Michael Serafino Endowed Fund, created by the Serafino family and Jessica and Lee Cunningham. They are generous donors. They're part of the family. They take classes. They're here all the time. We love them. We're so yes. grateful for their support. Um, yeah, alums of the program. Um, and so the, these two awards, awards are in honor of Jessica's brothers. And so the Michael Serafino Excellence in Ceramics Award this year for $300 is going to Dina Perleska for the Ecstatic Now El Aura Ecstatico. Yep, and, and you can see Kesley is showing us the piece right now. And then Dina, are you here? So I don't know if Dina's in the audience, but that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Love you anyway, Dina. We know you're busy. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna move to the next one. And so that is the Michael Serif, oh, I already said that one. Sorry, uh, the Excellence in Metals, the Mark Serafino. And that is going to Zhur Zhang for Refresh. Get your photo face on. <laughs> Hi, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I don't know if, yeah, thank you everyone, or thank you for uh, the award. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I just wanted to, sorry, I got a little mixed up. It's the Mark Serafino Excellence in Metals, which was awarded to Jur, and the Michael Serafino Excellence in Ceramics awarded to Dina. So I'm gonna move to the next one. Um, this is a really exciting one. This is a collab between the Department of Art and the Art Museum. This is the Mary Lawbaugh Purchase Award. Um, and this year we are so excited to uh, give that award to Analinda Gonzalez for Separated. This work is absolutely beautiful. I hope you are able to see it in person. It's, it has an exhibition record. Um, yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. We're so excited to have that in our collection. And Analinda, we're so thankful that you decided to sell it to us. Thank you, Analinda. Okay, let's see. All right, so um, the next one or the next two are sponsored by the Friends of the University Art Museum, which is a group of people who get together to support ongoing events at the museum. Um, they give money, they give their time, they give their support. They're just, we would not be able to do a lot of the things we do without the Friends. And so um, the first award sponsored by the Friends is going to Sadie Mendeville for Notes. 
and uh, Kessie's going to show that piece. Um, I know Sadie's not in the audience. She emailed me. She couldn't be here, but Sadie, we're, we're so happy to have this piece. Um, Sadie actually is a graduate student in clinical and educational psychology so outside of the department. Okay. So um, the next award, actually another set of awards, um, was a new donation this year. Um, and these are the Lorraine Fiddler Memorial Awards, and these are going to um, an excellence in contemporary art by artist mothers. And so the first award for $625 is going to Maggie Day for Domiciliary Venus. If you can show your face so we can take a screenshot of you. Uh, there's Maggie. Congratulations, Maggie. And the second uh, Lorraine Fiddler Memorial Award, both of which were donated by her children, um, is going to Dina Perleska, also for $625. Oh, there she is. Hi, oh, there's Dina. Dina. Yay, Hi, Dina. Dina. Okay, we're getting there. Um, the next award uh, is the Watercolor Association Award, and that's to any medium that contain or any uh, artwork that contains a water medium. And so uh, this year, that $100 gift certificate to Moss Art is um, going to Gus for By the Stroke of Midnight. Yay, okay, and then I realized I missed one of the friends of the gallery awards. We do have two. And so um, the second one, which is also $100, is going to Matthew Gallian for Ghost in the Machine. Hey, Matthew, congratulations. Okay, um, let's see, where are we? Okay, so this award is called the Interdisciplinary Award, which is something we're proud of as an interdisciplinary program. We encourage that in our students' work. And uh, this year, that award is going to, oh, I can't say that word, but <laughs> a Portrait of My Father by Bill Morey. Oh, Bill. Hey, Bill, could you want to mute yourself and say your title? <laughs> So oh, can you say the title of your, your piece for us? So it's a uh, Bertz's Garden. Uh, okay. Portrait of my father. Congratulations, Bill. Thank and you. That, that award is for $100 and it was donated uh, by a past friends board member, Cindy Robbins. Thank you, Cindy. Okay. So the next award is the uh, Babby Award. And this is um, actually a fund we have set up uh, here at NMSU to support ongoing students in their development. And that word award is for $500 and it's going to Yashoda Latkar also for transients. Okay. Um, okay, so we have, actually, this is a great one. This, this donor continuously each year without fail responds to our prospectus and, and provides a, a award for a student in design. And so this is the Excellence in Design Award provided by Louis Osepic, who's a professor emeritus of the Department of Art, who I think is actually here on the Zoom tonight, um, just constantly supportive of our program, and we're so thankful for that. And this year, the Excellence in Design Award is going to Anna Catherine Bates for White Center Grapefruit, Eggplant, Onion, Grapefruit. Thank you. 
Thank you. And thank you to Lewis for that, for that award. Um, okay. So I have another set of awards. These are um, provided by the Hood in New Mexico, which is this really cool um, contemporary art space. They do a lot of, well, before COVID, they did events. Um, it's a really great space. You all should check it out. It's um, in, in Mesilla Park. And, and you get so, to see some really cool motorcycles. Yeah. And they do fantastic things there. So uh, the Hood Awards provided by Richard and Marlene Para. The first one for $50 is going to Maggie Day for Domiciliary Venus. Maggie, can we take another picture of you? Come on, Maggie, <laughs> get back on here. See that lovely face. There it is. <laughs> um, and then the second Hood Award, also for $50, is going to Jeffrey P. Collin for Perception of Danger. You really got Kesley moving all over the place, don't we? Good, good job, job. Kesley. <laughs> okay, let me make sure I'm not missing anything. It's okay, Jeffrey, but maybe take a picture and send it to us so we can make you part of the collage. Okay, so. The next two awards, again, our work is so great in this show, they just couldn't decide, so they gave two awards, um, is provided by the, the Potter's Guild. And so um, they, would have, they would like me to say, on behalf of the Potter's Guild of Las Cruces, we award Dina Perleska a $50 award for the Potter's Guild um, Modern Ceramics Award. The Potter's Guild has a long history of supporting student artists and recognizing outstanding work. Congratulations. Thank you, Dina. And then they also gave another award. And so on behalf of the Potter's Guild as well, they would like to award Bethany Roberts a $50 award for the Functional Ceramics Award. Um, and again, they're so happy to support our students and congratulations. Okay. We're almost there. So this next award um, is sponsored by some of our favorite people in the entire city. And those are the, <laughs> the owners of Moss Art. Um, and this year, Moss Art is giving $200. And that award is going to Analinda Gonzalez for Separated. Yeah. Congrats, Analinda. Okay, so we are down to the last two awards. Um, and these awards are graciously provided by the College of Arts and Sciences. Dean Fontelli himself um, was generous enough to provide these awards. And Dean so, oh, and Dean Lanky is here from, from the College of Arts and Sciences. And so um, the first award provided by the college is the Dean's Honorable Mention. And that's for $250. And it's going to Carlos Lee Sullivan for comfort. Lee, we're turning your video on. There you go. Thank you. Great. Congrats, Lee. Okay, so we're at the last award of the night. Um, I absolutely adored this work, and I'm so happy to give the Dean's Award of Excellence worth $500 to Natalie Morales for Untitled Number One. I think Natalie was here earlier. Are you here, Natalie? There, there she is. is, Natalie. Congratulations, Congratulations. Natalie. And thank you, Dean Lake. We're glad that you were so, able to yeah. come and be with us and to support, be supported by the college is so important for these students. and. We really appreciate your presence. So I just want to say to all of the donors, thank you so much 
we think, especially right now, this year slash continuation of last year, um, the students need support and they need help and they need money. And we're so happy that we can just be a channel to, to give them the support and help that they need. Um, and if you were awarded something tonight, I'll be in contact with you and, and I'll work with you to get all of that figured out next week. So expect an email from me. And obviously if you have any questions, contact me and yeah. We also want to say to all of the students who are both in the show and applied to the show, and continue to apply to this show. We are so proud of what you were able to accomplish during such a difficult and tumultuous time. We saw amazing work being made that was submitted, but we also know from your professors how hard you've been working this year under, again, such difficult circumstances. So we're just all, we're so proud of you and what you're doing and what you're making and who you are and how strong you've stayed um, and we're just, yeah, we're just, we're really proud. So thank you for being part of this. Whether you submitted and you got in or you did it, we care about all of your work. So thank you. Okay, so I think it's Matoko time. Oh, so that's me. <laughs> so I am so happy to now pass the baton over to Matoko Furuhashi, who is a associate professor uh, here at NMSU in the metal smithing program. She's amazing. We love her. And she's going to talk to you about the Bachelor of Fine Arts students. Matoko? Yes. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Jasmine, for the introductions. And then congratulations for all of you who is graduating this semester. Um, this is a time that I'm super excited, but at the same time, a little sad to let them go. But I'm going to keep in going for the exciting moment of the showing for the display of the BFA show. Here I am on the bridge gallery. Um, I have the, the first one that you're going to be entering to uh, Jake um, Ji Young Kim's work. And then here is the Blancas. And then we have the, sorry, Branca Martinez and then Jesus Del Rio. We're going to start first with the Blanca Martinez. Blanca, can you unmute yourself? Yes, hi, hello. I'm Blanca Martinez. I'm gonna be graduating this semester with my BFA with a concentration in graphic design. Uh, the themes that I mainly explore in my work is how relationships relate to my identity. Uh, my newest work this semester focuses on my family relations and emotions. I call this installation uh, Martinez slash Granillo. Uh, I explore the complexities of how the vices within my parents have created the people my sister and I have grown into. I create this by using four primary illustrations of my family and creating a domestic living space for these illustrations to lay in. By bringing these vices to life, I create a conversation about how families interact with one another in a home space and how emotions can carry on to future generations. I feel that these types of emotions are universal and can relate to many different households. I wanna create the conversation of how these households can react to one another through these different vices. And I just wanna thank everyone for joining in today. And I'll go ahead and pass it over to my co-exhibitor, Jake. Hi, um, my name is Ji Young Kim. Um, I'd like to say thank you to my family and every professors and friends before starting. Uh, I'm I'm the one of the artists in this BF, uh, BFA show. My major is uh, studio art, focusing on photography. The title uh, and then the title of my work is isolation. So through this work. I want to express men, uh, mental and physical pain we are, we are currently, currently feeling. Uh, each photograph begins with one idea. And a, a photograph, photographer's job is not just to catch the dream, but also to turn it into art that is larger than the life and beyond all initial 
uh, uh, expectations. I uh, interpret, interpret uh, photography in relation to the lens. My work is defined by the relation between subject and photogra photographer. My, pro uh, my process combines the needs of the words of com commerce with the insight from the fine arts, spiritual, spiritual, uh, spirituality, and psychology. Um, in this pandemic situation, maybe many people are living in isolation. So I hope that the fears will be freed from the emotional isolation through my work. And of course, somebody's comfort or encouragement will be important. But I think it's most important to get out to get out of the confined room that we create by encouraging yourself. I think. Thank you. Uh, and then I'm going to pass to the Hesu Stelio. Um, hi. Uh, my name is Jesus Del Rio. I am a queer Latino sculptor based off uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico. While growing up, I experienced uh, the effects of machismo within uh, my family and my culture and discrimination within the Amer American culture. Uh, these experiences alongside with other issues such as poverty and discrimination had led me to an intimate knowledge of the harsh realities of anxiety and depression. Um, that I've experienced. And so my work aims to connect uh, people from differing walks of life um, over their commonalities. I create in installations and sculptures that challenge the taboo and in consequence start conversations about mental health and sociological issues. Las dos piezas que he creado han sido puestas en este espacio en frente de una de la otra con la intención de crear una conversación de de en una conversación entre las dos piezas. El tema de mis piezas se refieren a las injusticias y a la discriminación que sucede en los Estados Unidos hacia la gente de color. Uh, and I just want to thank everybody that came and to support us. <laughs> and I'll back to Matoko. All right, thank you. In these uh, BFAs, we have the um, same as the MFAs and JSS for the breakout room to have in a little question and answer. Also, I would like to mention that they're having for the um, artist talk schedule on the May 13th at 6 p.m. Each of them have 15 minutes to talk about their work and the link is on the chat. I just put it in there. Um, yeah, and then if you wanna see it in person, please um, reserve for the ticket at University Art Museum, uh, time tickets. Uh, link. And um, I also, yeah, congratulations for all. And um, I would just mention a really quick about for like, we also have the on the hallway, the middle students has ex, um, participated for the collaborative exhibition called the Pimples. The students in the casting project uh, participated for the exchange of the pins throughout the, the three different institutions. So if you come and please take a look at this as well. Okay, so now I would like to introduce Sylvia for the next event, which is the given for the art department scholarship. I'm just gonna say one thing. We got some messages that maybe people couldn't see the Spanish uh, closed captioning. All you have to do is go to the bottom of your screen um, and there should be a little closed captioning button and you can turn those on. You have to turn them on in your end if you would like to see them. Go ahead, Sylvia. Yeah, I, can, I, can I say quick about the Sylvia? Um, so those of you that who know Sylvia, she's been teaching for the Museum Conservation here at NMSU. Um, she is um, receiving a master's degree from the University um, University in Madrid in Spain. Um, she's been fabulous members of the university here. Um, we have lucky to have her in her program. We actually be the one of the two program that offers degree in the museum conservation in the United States. And then she has been funded 
a lot of um, grants. And then recently she also have funded from the Mellon Foundation to send in for the Latino students for the full paid summer internship for the five years from now to the Smithsonian. And then also her students has been going overseas abroad for the working for the different museums across the world and then um, having for the uh, constant progress because of the Sylvia starting at NMSU. So Sylvia, um, she's gonna introduce for the Department Art Scholarship. Thank you so much, Motoko. That was nice. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, everybody. Um, and thank you every single student that applied for the scholarships and awards for the, um, uh, the art department um, for this semester and for the next uh, academic year. Um, so with uh, just let's start because I, I have to go very quickly. I know they told me that. So the next, this is gonna be like the Oscars, right? Um, so the next recipients for the um, awards are, for Mesilla Valley Arts Guild, $205 goes to Alexandra Willy. Alexandra, are you around here somehow? There you are. Congratulations. All right. So next award, you got the, the yeah, the, Okay, got it. Okay, so the Janet Swenson Memorial Scholarship goes to Jeffrey Collin. Jeffrey, are you around? Congratulations. And that is going to be $250 as well. So uh, Sylvia, he is around. He texted in the chat that his video is not working. Oh, bummer. So okay. what I told so send him- Send a picture. Yeah, that's Let's what I go. said. I said, send a picture and we'll Photoshop you in. All right, wonderful. Okay, congratulations, Jeffrey. And also the Philip Ranch Scholarship, $190 goes to Analinda Gonzalez. Congratulations, Analinda. Good job. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, Jose Cisneros Art Student Travel Award goes to two students, and each student is going to get $630. So the first one is going to be Analinda Gonzalez. We still have her there. <laughs> All right, congratulations, Ana Linda, again. And then to Maya Garcia. Maya, are you around? No? Okay, so hopefully she can send a, a, a photo and congratulations to Maya. All right, next award is going to be Ken Barrick Memorial Scholarship. And that is $765. And that is gonna is uh, is going to Carlos Sullivan. Carlos, I know you were around. There you go. Congratulations, Carlos. All right, great. Uh, next, next is gonna be the Jean Dodier Scholarship, and that is one thousand dollars. And it's going to Analinda Gonzalez. <laughs> Congratulations, Analinda. All right. The next one is going to be Candy Stern Endowed Scholarship. That is, uh, is only for um, museum conservation students. Uh, that um, they already took my classes and and they are trying to to become conservators. Yay! I already had several of those. So uh, we are going to divide this uh, scholarship into three of my students. Three of my students. So the first one and each one is going to get seven hundred dollars. Okay. 
So $700 for each one of, of these three. The first one is Symphony Scott. Symphony, are you around here? Hopefully you are. Is she, do you know? If not, congratulations and we, we will um, contact her. Sylvia, um, I was just notified. I don't think any of the remainder of the students are gonna announce are actually in the Zoom. Okay, so we, so can give we, just we will contact can... them. Okay, yeah. so I'm going, the second one is gonna be Rose Burns. And the third one is gonna be Yasmin Jahangiri. All right, so congratulations to the three of them, the future conservators. And then the very last one is going to be Liet Martinez Memorial Scholarship is $740 and it goes to Matthew Deeds. All right, so congratulations, Matthew. And for all the students that you applied and you weren't selected this time, keep trying. You never know. I have a lot of examples of students saying, oh, I'm not going to try. Well, I'm not going to. No, never do that because many times you get it without thinking. So keep trying and hopefully next time you'll get it. Okay. And thank you for applying and congratulations to everybody. Thank you so much, Sylvia. Um, you know, if, if, if people don't know about our conservation program, the other thing that Sylvia does with her students, which is absolutely phenomenal for us and very important for us, uh, is that Sylvia works um, each year with our retablo collection. And for those of you that, who might not know, we have in the NMSC permanent art collection, which is housed within the University Art Museum, we have the largest collection of Mexican retablos in the United States. And because of Sylvia and what Sylvia is doing is with her students, we are able to actually conserve and work on the retablos in our collection. And because of the prestige of Sylvia and what Sylvia has done with our program and with our students, we also have a lot of donations that have come in of retablo. So um, Courtney Aldrich, who is uh, currently in the Contemporary Gallery, just for a second, Courtney, don't get angry at me, but if you could just pin yourself so we can see the contemporary gallery and yourself just for one second. Um, Courtney has curated a beautiful exhibition right now, thanks to the wonderful donation of Gloria Giffords, as well as the different donors who have donated it throughout the years, eight different families who have donated. We have this beautiful retablo exhibition. We also have where Courtney is right now a pop-up show in our contemporary gallery. And this is actually showing the shift in our mission that we did in 2016, where we've expanded our mission to say that we're going to collect more women, LGBTQ, Latino, Latina, Latinx, and um, people, indigenous and people of color into our collection where there was a, unfortunately a gaping hole for many years. So it's been uh, the, the practice of, of the NMSU Permanent Art Collection since 2016 to start acquiring works both through gift and through a small acquisitions um, uh, um, uh, fund that we have to add these works into the collection. So that's what you're seeing. This, this and Courtney's exhibition within the Retablo collection, Joseph and the Laborers, you may also come and visit that when you visit the jury student exhibitions. And all you have to do is go to uam.nmsu.edu and click on tickets and you can reserve your time tickets now through uh, the summer actually with both of those exhibitions as well. Thank you, Courtney, for all your hard work curating the exhibition in the Rothabla collection. Thank you, Gloria Giffords and the Giffords Family Foundation for their generous donation of the Rotablo and for helping us take those Rotablo in. Um, and thank you, Sylvia, for all the hard work that you do um, to, to help us upkeep this collection. Thank you. I want to say that what we're about to do is we're going to go into breakout rooms. And in those breakout rooms, you can have conversations with the BFA or you can have conversations with the grad students. 
Um, or you can have conversations with us. We will also be in a breakout room for the juried student show. And actually Jasmine and I are gonna go into the, um, the, the Ned and Sandy Zane Bennett study room to uh, answer your questions about the juried student show. I wanna say one more thank you again to all of our donors, past, present, future. You make this exhibitions happen, but you also make it so that the University Art Museum can run and can work with all of these phenomenal students that we work with, creating these prep in professional practices, real world professional practice opportunities for our students. And it, it's really because of the donors, especially during these times, supporting us has been you know, just I mean, unmeasurable. The, the impact is huge. So thank you so much to all of our donors, especially the ones that we mentioned during the scholarships for all, for supporting the University Art Museum and the Department of Art. And I would just say, thank you to the students. We were a little worried um, that they wouldn't have a lot of work to submit because everyone was in a pandemic for a year. And I, almost every piece that was submitted was 2020 or 2021. So we're here for you. We're here because of you. Um, we're just so thankful that you guys are continuing on and we, Marissa and I are just, we want to support everything you guys are doing. Um, and yeah, we're just so thankful that you were able to, to submit such great work during such hard times. Um, and thank you so much.